Um, I'm Leah Robinson, and I'm the Foods, Nutrition, and Health Agent in Central Kansas District, which is Ottawa and Sling Counties, and I'll be your host today. So we have a really great program for you, brought to you by, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got Cheryl and Jackson, our Family and Consumer Science Specialist for the Northeast area, and Lori Wollner. She's a nutrition, food safety, and preservation agent in Wyandotte County. And today they're going to talk about the MIND diet and preface for Watt, Kansas. So some of you have been on before, but we've got a few ground rules to cover. Um, we thank you for joining us for our Wednesday, Living Well Wednesday series. And we've got one more month left. And if you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to type those in the Q&A box. And if you have any comments, you can put those um, in the questions comments section as well. Um, there is an option to, to ask anonymously if you feel more comfortable with that. And our monitors are going to be Melody Garcia and Cassidy Lutz agents within our state that will be taking care of that. And always, as always, our session will be recorded and can be viewed later at our Living Well Wednesday website. And um, we'll just go ahead and get started. Just, just another little bit of housekeeping. We do want to acknowledge that K-State Research and Extension is an equal opportunity employer. Therefore, we don't discriminate against anyone and so if you have a special request to attend any of our programs that we have, please reach out to us and we can make some special accommodations. So with that, we'll go ahead and let Sherilyn and Lori take it away. Right, good afternoon. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Gonna pull that slides back up. But I do pull back up. Yeah, we need the slides back up. As she's doing that, I'm gonna launch a poll. And that just kind of introduces our topic for today on the mind diet, and also we're gonna give just a short little brief um, overview of what Kansas, but mostly focusing on the MIND diet and how nutrition improves our mental health. So I want you to go through which of these statements do you believe are false? And you can choose more than one. So which statements do you believe are false? Are you able to see the poll? I'm not, Sherilyn. Sherilyn, you might need to relaunch it. Um, you mean to go ahead and relaunch it? Yeah, would you please, Rachel? Oh, sure. Thank you. Okay, can you see it now? Looks like we're starting to there get we go. people yep. participating. And Sherilyn, let me know when you want me to end it and I will, and then I can share the results. Okay, I think are people still responding? We have about 83%. It's still going. We might give it a couple more seconds. We have a few more coming in. So 
think we're stopped. We've got 89%. So I'm going to go ahead and end and share the results with everyone. There we are. All right. Um, what is good for the heart is also good for the brain. That's actually true. Uh, the second one, dementia is inevitable, especially if it's in your family. That is false. Almost all adults need at least seven hours of sleep at night. Um, that is actually, it, it's true. You need at least seven hours of sleep each night. Regular physical activity is good for your body, but it doesn't improve your memory and brain function. Um, that is false. And the mind diet is another name for the Mediterranean diet. And that is also false. So we're going to learn about some of those things uh, through the presentation today. And I'm going to turn it over to Lori to get us started. Awesome. All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you again for allowing me into your space today for this afternoon. Um, just a, a little, kind of just an overview snapshot before we really get into the specifics. Um, this lesson was really brought about by a request from one of our local libraries um, who wanted to do an emphasis during Mental Health Month, which is May, on the nutrition and healthy lifestyles. So that's how this was all how this all came about. And I appreciate and um, recognize Dr. Sandy Proctor for looking over the contents um, of this material. So we're gonna look more broadly at mental health and then we'll focus specifically on that MIND diet. So next slide, please. There we go, perfect. So a little um, caveat here, I guess. I just wanna put this statement out there and, and just recognize that this topic of mental health, mental illness, it's very complex. And while there are strong connections between nutrition and mental health, otherwise known as nutrition psychiatry, this is not to imply that if you improve your eating habits and you start drinking more water, et cetera, that this is gonna be a cure-all and always to seek a medical advice from your, your doctor. Uh, and at this point, I'd like to kind of think about what are factors that affect your mental wellness? And you could pop those in the chat while I continue, but really, how about you personally? What do you do to strive for um, mental, better mental um, wellness? And again, you can just go ahead and put those in chat. And while we're doing that, I do want to also differentiate between mental health and illness and mental illness in that they are not the same thing. According to CDC, uh, mental illness refers to a condition that affects a person's thinking and feeling and mood and behavior. And they, they can include, but certainly are not limited to depression and anxiety, uh, bipolar disorder and so on. Um, mental health, however, embodies our emotional and our psycholog psychological and our social well well-being. And it actually affects the way that we think and feel and act and how we respond to distress and how we deal with other people. So again, recognizing while these terms may be used um, interchangeably, um, they are not the same thing. Oh, great, we're getting, getting some good um, comments in here. Perfect, listening to music, I love it. Yes, you're hitting this specifically where I need you to be, so thank you. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so what's the connection? And again, um, you know, as we're gonna keep saying, it is, kind of, it is a very much a, a complex um, issue. Mental health as it relates to eating habits and proper brain function and the, that food and mood can, connection, they go hand in hand. Now, we know that there is hard, fast evidence between diet and physical activity um, as it relates to certain diseases like type 2 diabetes and heart disease and some cancers. But again, less understood is that relationship, that connection between dietary intake and mental health, because again, there are so many factors involved. But we do know, you know, that old saying, what you are, what you eat, which means what we take in 
to our bodies is either benefiting or harming our body, and that includes our brain, which in that ripple effect affects our mental health and our wellness. So again, it's important to remember that food is fuel for our bodies and our brain, and the quality of your food does matter. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, in uh, an effort of time, we're gonna, I'm going to touch just briefly on these. And again, like I said, I know the title of the presentation is The Mind Diet, as and also the focus on Watt, Kansas. But I want to address each one of these very briefly. So The Mind Diet, we'll talk about a little bit later. That Mediterranean-style diet, I believe you, you've probably had some uh, trainings on that um, throughout the past year. Um, but again, that's that, that uh, associated with um, lean proteins and fruits and veggies and olive oil and those healthy fats. I put, uh, put a link right there that's an excellent site to go to, the med instead of meds.com. Um, the DASH diet is a, a get kind of a characteristics of the Mediterranean diet. With both of those, uh, reducing total in the different types of fat and minimizing sugar in those simple carbohydrates. Um, the next point is, um, again, the reducing the fat and sugar, which is echoed throughout many evidence literatures on healthy eating. Um, there has been an increasing connection between the, that gut biome, specifically how a diet high in fat and sugar can be a detriment, actually, to our healthy gut. And more I'll get more into the healthy gut connection. Um, we talked about uh, just also breakfast and you know how it can clear out that fog and really help us be fueled and re reduce the sense of fatigue. And of course, staying hydrated. We know that most of our bodies are made up of water. So when our water supply gets too low, the effect can be far reaching, which it just disrupts our whole body balance. Okay, next slide, please. All right, um, Dr. Uh, Proctor, who I mentioned earlier, uh, had an article um, this, within this last year, and many of the, the, these points that you see in front of you are taken from that. So she said that there is a growing body of evidence that indicates that, the, the, again, that gut, the human gut serves as kind of a second brain that affects not only our digest, digestion, but also a person's mood and their health and even the way that um, we think. Um, many experts are discovering that there is a link between, again, the gut and the human brain in which the two routinely almost communicate together about changes in the body. So the synergy between the systems in our body may help explain some of the mental and physical or our mind versus gut relationships that we are becoming more aware of. But Simply put, foods that promote gut health not only may be good for you physically, but also for your mental state um, of mind, maybe perhaps e easing conditions such as depression and anxiety. So exactly what does that brain and gut connection look like? Well, number one, um, of course, you know, we probably know this language to, just to eat a wide range of food. And so dietary diversity is very important to our health, starting from infants and all the way through the stages of life. Of course, number two, eating a variety of veggies, fruits, beans, legumes, because how they, they have all those really kind of special type of, of, of bacteria that are really good for our gut and have multiple benefits. Um, we, again, there are those fermented foods. Um, they are high in the lactobacilli, which is again, a, a good beneficial bacteria. Uh, the next point, avoiding those artificial sweeteners. Studies have shown that they tend to, to negatively affect the microbiota, again, that, those healthy gut um, biomes. Um, eating probiotic foods, um, leeks, asparagus, again, really benefit, benefiting the bacteria in our gut. Breastfeeding at least six months, eating whole grains because of those fiber and the non-digestible carbohydrates. Uh, really looking at your plate and seeing how much of your plate is based on plant-based types of foods. And lastly, eating foods that are rich in the polyphenols. Again, because they have these wonderful antioxidant properties um, that are broken down and digested by, by those, those gut um, microbiota. All right, next slide. 
Now we're going to get into the mind diet because I need to make sure Sherilyn has plenty of time to talk about what Kansas and some and the Alzheimer's um, information. But um, this uh, this diet again came from um, her name was uh, Dr. Um, Claire Morris, Martha Claire Morris, excuse me, and she's a nutritional epidemiologist. Um, so her and her colleagues came up with what they call mind diet, and it's actually the Mediterranean dash combination intervention for neurodegenerative delays. So I did actually look that up. People have said, what does the mind stand for? And so that's it. It's quite a mouthful. But if you look at this, they have 15 dietary components with 10 being those brain healthy food groups. And, and if you look, you probably go, yeah, yep. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty standard leafy greens, veggies. And uh, you can see the list here. And of course, the limitations on red meat, those saturated types of fat, butter and stick margarine, um, which are hydrogenated fats, those cheeses, you know, those are probably standard foods that you would think, yeah, I, I, I get limiting those. But flipping back to what to include, um, if you notice, instead of just a general category of, of fruits, we see berries in what to include. Um, they look specifically at blueberries as one of the more potent foods in terms of protecting the brain. They also closely studied um, uh, strawberries, um, who, which perform very high in terms of affecting, positively affecting cognitive function. And, and what they noted, which I think is really encouraging for all of us, she said that even if you just mildly adhere to this, this type of eating, this mind diet, that there was a reduction in their risk for Alzheimer's. So I think that is really encouraging. And hopefully it's not an all or none approach that, hey, if I just make a few little strides on including some of these foods, then, you know, then maybe I will see some um, encouraging um, outcomes, some good benefits. And I think, you know, the answer to that is yes, you will. Um, next slide, please. All right, Sherilyn and I talked, you know, that was really important to address the processed foods. We hear kind of that blanket statement, avoid processed foods, which seems to be in response when somebody says, hey, how can I eat healthier? So, you know, I think it's important to understand what, uh, what a processed food actually is. Are all processed foods um, unhealthy? And I think some of the, you know, the answers of response to that might kind of surprise you. Um, if you really want to think about uh, differentiating those processed foods, you want to look at minimally and also the heavily processed foods. So minimally processed foods have been pre-cut for convenience. So for example, egg spinach, those little baby cut carrots, even roasted nuts. So minimally processed foods, they do have a place in our healthy, um, in healthy diets. Now the heavily processed foods, those include those ready to eat foods like crackers and deli foods, deli meats, excuse me, um, frozen dinners. So heavily processed foods should probably be avoided um, when possible. So really kind of understanding the difference between the two. And when choosing um, those types of food, it's important just to, to read your, your label. Um, next slide, please. Okay, nutrients to keep in mind. When I looked at different resources about nutrients that um, benefit, benefit our brain health, these were, I guess, some of the, those that they highlighted are more the superstars of nutrients. And you can see them for, for yourself there. Um, and we're not gonna get into the specific categories for the sake of time. But I think instead of focusing on one nutrient, you wanna look at the commonalities. And what are those? Well, they would be lean meats and low-fat dairy, veggies of all kinds, including those with deep co color and citrus and other fruits, uh, nuts and legumes. I mean, you kind of get the picture because you see the my plate there. So again, it gets back to that diversity of food. Next slide. And again, some tips to, that you can take to the store, shopping on the perimeter, where most of your fresh produce would be, veggies, whole grains, just be a good nutrition uh, facts reader using the 520 rule, that is 5% or less 
of a nutrient um, is considered low, 20% or more of a nutrient would be considered high. Next slide, please. Okay. So we do know that dietary shifts bring changes in our brain structure and functioning, which ultimately lead to changes in our behavior and in our mental health. And this behavior could be in the form, it's not certainly not limited to, but decreased depression, maybe elevating your mood and alleviating an anxiety. And um, Dr. Proctor shared this uh, closing uh, statement um, with me, and I thought it was really good uh, by Dr. David Lips. Um, Achieving a he healthier brain and reducing your risk of developing dementia can be as straightforward as adopting a healthier lifestyle, including healthier food choices. And with that, I think this is where Sherilyn takes over. All right, thank you, Lori. Yeah. And next, great, here we go. We're gonna talk about some other things that you can help you to love your brain. And nutrition is so, so important, and, but there's more. And so these 10 ways to love your brain really come from the Alzheimer's Association and they apply to all of us at any stage of our life. And I wanna review those just real briefly. Um, the first one is to break a sweat, to get at least 150 minutes of exercise per week. We'll talk more about exercise in just a moment. Uh, the next to hit the books, that might mean that you can, uh, something like taking a class online or a class in your community um, to butt out. If you smoke, make every effort to quit smoking now. And if you don't smoke, don't start. Um, also to follow your heart, because we know that risk factors for heart disease also increase your risk for cognitive decline. Um, heads up is simply to wear, uh, advice to wear a helmet, use your seatbelt, prevent falls. Fuel up right. We just talked about a healthy diet and what that looks like. Catch some Z's. A lack of sleep contributes to memory, memory loss and thinking ability. And they really recommend getting eight to nine hours of sleep per night. And so that's even, you know, seven minimum. But if you can get eight to nine, that's really optimal. To take care of your mental health, because some studies have linked depression with an increased risk of cognitive decline. And to buddy up. Strong social connections throughout life may support better, better brain health. So make sure you enjoy time with friends, um, volunteer in your community, engage in hobbies, and just generally be a part of your community. And then stump yourself. And that's to challenge your brain with card games, puzzles, uh, learning a new skill. These all have brain boosting benefits. And so uh, we do have a fact sheet from K-State Research and Extension called Alzheimer's 101 Fact Sheet that is available if you'd like to take a look at, at uh, more detail about some of those. Next slide, please. I'm gonna just set the stage here for talking about Wakansas by first focusing on exercise and your brain. We know that exercise will help you maintain good blood flow to your brain. Um, it helps to reduce release endorphins and these are the you may notice if you exercise that you are in a better mood, you know, you feel better, you have a more positive outlook, you're more productive. These kinds of things, there's all sorts of things that, that happen to your body as you exercise and, and positive things that, that happen. And the really great thing is these benefits you will notice immediately. And then want to focus just briefly on the physical activity guidelines for Americans. And this also leads into our Walk Kansas program. The physical activity guidelines recommend that you get at least 150 minutes or two and a half hours of moderate physical activity per week. That's the minimum. And so moderate activity is where you can, uh, you walk or do some kind of activity at a pace where you can just barely carry on a conversation, but not sing. And they also talk about vigorous activity, which you can get um, benefits with less time but a vigorous activity is where you can only say a couple of words perhaps, and but not carry on a conversation. So think about activities that you like to do uh, that, that are not necessarily just walking or, or, other act or any kind of activity. It might be playing tennis or swimming or um, just being active out doing gardening work, that type of thing. And so there's just lots and lots of benefits from physical activity uh, to your brain as well as your body. The next slide, please. 
I want to talk just briefly about Walk Kansas 2022. Uh, Walk Kansas is an eight week health initiative and a signature program for K-State Research and Extension. And we've been offering Walk Kansas statewide since 2001. So it's been going on for quite a while. Every year we look at a little slightly different focus because we have a lot of people who um, repeat the program year after year. Um, but we take, this year we're gonna be looking specifically at how physical activity and nutrition impact brain health and your mind in general. And some nuts and bolts about Walk Kansas, like I just said, it's an eight week health initiative. It starts March 27, runs through May 21, and you can get more information at walkkansas.org. Registration materials are still, um, we're just fine tuning those. Registration will hopefully open for most communities on March 1. So you can, at this point, start thinking about how you might um, want to form a team or if you want to participate solo and, and be thinking about that. So we, we've got about four weeks that you can in, uh, get your team together or to uh, register. It's, it is based on the physical activity guidelines. And even though it's called Walk Kansas, it's really, you move your way. All activity counts as long as you're working at that moderate intensity level. So we focus on increasing physical activity. We also focus on healthy eating, on tips to get adequate restful sleep and how to manage stress. And like I said, it is a team program. So teams of of um, approximately six people. Uh, you, that's the, the goal is to find six and, or you can choose the solo trail and go on your own. And each team decides what kind of challenge they wanna work for. If they wanna just go toward striving to get that minimum amount of two and a half hours of physical activity per week, or if the team members want to get four hours of that moderate activity or six based on, on what their goals are. There is a cost to the participant, it's $10. That cost includes a weekly, weekly newsletter, access to the online tracking system where they can log all of their uh, minutes of activity and fruits and veg vegetables they eat, that kind of thing. We'll have some educational webinars this year and some resources. And also uh, many of the communities offer some type of local events in, just in their community where you can get to know other Walk Kansas participants. And if you are a state of Kansas employee and you work toward HealthQuest points, you can participate for free and then also earn those four points of HealthQuest credit. At the end of the presentation today, we're going to be doing a drawing for a team registration. So it'll be a $60 value for a team of six people that can participate in Walk Kansas at no charge. So we'll be doing that drawing at the end. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> I mentioned that there are a lot of immediate benefits to physical activity. And this, di this uh, infogram really emphasizes what those are. So a single bout of moderate or vigorous physical activity can provide you with some immediate benefits as well as long-term benefits. But the immediate ones are, it helps to improve your sleep quality. Um, you have less feelings of anxiety, uh, help reduce your blood pressure and also improves your mood. You're just one walk or workout away from a good mood. So those are some of the immediate benefits. The long-term ones are, it's a great benefit to your brain health. And also um, it reduces the risk of developing dementia, including Alzheimer's and reduces your risk of depression. It also improves heart health by lowering your risk of heart disease, stroke, and type two diabetes. It can help prevent cancer. There are eight cancers. The cancer of the bladder, the breast, the colon, endometrium, esophagus, kidney, lung, and stomach cancer that exercise has preventative um, benefits for. It helps to maintain a healthy weight or, or reach a healthy weight, improves your bone strength and your balancing coordination to help reduce falls um, and a risk of those. And so it also, there's emerging research that shows that Regular physical activity can also help boost your immune function. So there are many, many reasons to enjoy regular physical activity. And next slide, please. I wanna talk just really briefly about um, the blue zones, which you may have heard of those. And in 2020, the Walk Kansas program focused on learning more about the blue zones. So you can also read those uh, newsletters from that program year on our Walk Kansas website. But the blue zones are communities where 
people live longer and healthier lives. And Dan Bootner did the research on blue zones, building on research from others uh, that others had done prior to, to his doing it. Um, and they identified these communities where there are people that live much, much longer and are healthier. And there are nine habits that they identify that they call the power nine that these people seem to have in common. And these are listed here, it's to downshift. They know how to, um, man they, it's not that they don't have stress, they know how to manage stress effectively. A real key one is that they have a sense of purpose. They know why they wake up each day. Um, there's a plant slant to their diet that they focus. They have a, eat a lot more plants. Um, they also enjoy a, a small glass of wine at five with friends and responsibly, I might add. And I, I do want to just say that there's ongoing research about uh, wine and, and it's um, possibly protected benefits, but also there's a lot of, of things to be concerned about too. So it, I think the key takeaway is that it's the, the portion because it's only a five ounce uh, glass of wine that they, and, and not more than that. So it's important to also look at the portion and the whole big picture of that um, particular habit that they have in common. And, and also they're spending that time with friends. So they're, they're getting that benefit as well. Um, they put family first. And another one is they eat mindfully and they stop when they're approximately 80% full, <clears throat> excuse me. And I think for a lot of us, that's something that we don't do in, in, in America very often is we tend to probably um, eat faster and, and eat more. Um, and so they are very conscious about stopping before they're completely full. They move naturally. And one of the communities that has the, the lowest um, amount of dementia, and also they have about half the rate of heart disease as Americans and almost no dementia is in Icaria, Greece. And Icaria is a, a mountainous island and everything that they do, they have to be walking you know, up or downhill. And so they get lots and lots of activity, but they just move naturally throughout their day. They're not going to the gym. They're not not necessarily doing workouts, but they just move continually throughout their day. They uh, surround themselves with people who support positive behaviors with that right tribe. And then they have a strong sense of belonging to a faith-based community of some kind. So if, you, if you're interested in learning more about Blue Zones, there's the website there, you can, can look at that. Um, but I think it's really fascinating research. Next slide, please. We're just about to the end here. These are some of the resources that were used in putting together uh, the information today. And your, uh, if you'd like to learn more, next slide, please. And just kind of a, a recap. Um, and I really like the very last one here. The key to a healthy life is having a healthy mind. And I hope it's a takeaway for you today is, is to remember that what is good for your heart is also good for your brain. Um, and that there's, that, that it's definitely um, a big picture, that there's a connection between healthy habits that are healthy for your body as well as for your mind. And I believe that's the last slide. Next slide, please. Yes, thank you for joining us today. I'm going to ask Cassidy if she can share with us who is the winner of our Watt Kansas team registration. Yes, uh, the winner for your registration would be Kimberly Sanchez. All right. Yes, and Kimberly, can you just put in chat what um, what county you're from, or what or, or town close to where you or where you live? Salina, wonderful. We will be in contact with you and how uh, you can can utilize that team registration. And yes, the we can. Um, we can get those slides either emailed to you or they will be posted on the website. Uh, there were just a few questions and that was uh, 
wanting some examples of the foods uh, that Lori discussed, um, the fermented foods and the polyphenol foods, if she had some examples of those. I think the polyphenols, um, that's a really good question. You think I'd slide by some of these terms without explaining. Um, pretty much mirror the Mediterranean and the, um, the mine diet with the berries, uh, nuts and seeds, emphasis on those categories and, and vegetables, also some herbs and spices. Um, then the fermented foods would include, I think Gail put a link there. Oh yeah, we do have a really good publication done by one of our uh, Donna Krug actually. Um, and those would include uh, uh, sauerkraut, kefir, um, kombucha, um, kimchi. Those are some examples of uh, fermented foods and they have those um, the lactobacilli which are the healthy um, bacteria and then again Gail put a link so thank you good question and thank you too for everybody's uh, comments on the ways in which you um, practice good mental um, wellness or strive for good mental wellness. There was some excellent um, ideas in chat. So lots that we can take from one another. Okay, does that conclude our questions? I didn't see any more. Okay. Trying to get to our next, our very last slide. It'll talk about the program that we have coming up. It's, um, thank you for joining us for today, first of all. And thank you, Cheryl and Lori, that was so interesting. And I'm sure that we all learned some really great stuff to take home with this. We'd like to encourage everyone to complete our survey, like we usually like, people to do. Um, you'll be sent a QR code and you should be receiving that shortly. Um, and feel free to take the survey, give any suggestions, comments that you would like to share with us. Those are very important to us. We hope that you will join us for our next lesson. It will be March 9th and it will be presented by Deb Wood and Joy Miller, extension agents and it's preparing your, for your finances during a disaster. And we'll be sending out more info on that. And lastly, if you would like any more information or additional resources, please feel free to reach out to any of your local extension agents. If you're not sure where to find your local office, you can find it by going to ksre.kstate.edu. I'll say that one more time, ksre.kstate.edu. You'll be able to hover over the county where you live and find the location of your local office. So hopefully you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you so much and have a good rest of your afternoon. Uh, Leah, we did have one more uh, question in the chat. Mm -hmm. Um, does the canning process of fermented foods destroy the enzymes important in the fermented foods? I, um, unless um, Gail or Sherilyn, I am going to say no to that, but that is not with any hard, fast evidence behind it only the fact that many fermented foods are preserved, but between holding it fresh um, and canning the food preservation process, adding that heat element, I'm not quite sure. That is a really good question. I don't know, Sherilyn, if you have any feedback on that. Lori, this is Gail. I would agree with you in the process of, of fermented foods and preserving them. I think the characteristics of the fermentation would still be a benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, 
even with the heat processing. Okay. It's, it's not like a, a water soluble vitamin nutrient would be in mm -hmm. having the effect of the heat processing. Okay. Thank you. Great. Again, good question. And what's another question? Can a dog or other pet help with mental health? And um, yes, I mean, this is one that I can speak to that uh, pets are definitely uh, a help with mental health. Um, there's scientific you know, proof that they help calm us and de-stress us. And I know that a lot of uh, senior living facilities, nursing homes have in, um, pets that live on the facility to help with um, just the the mental health and uh, of the senior adults there. So that's one of those things that they definitely do help us uh, with our, our mental health. And I'll also add that a dog is one of the best exercise buddies you can find, which also <laughs> helps with mental health. Thank you all for your questions and for joining us today.